Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. I truly thought I was done with this topic for a little while. I did a video, I answered some responses to it, and we were going to move forward. But this is the first time I've had a Linux content creator speak out that he disagreed with what he saw in my video, which is great. As I always say, everybody's got an opinion, and that's awesome. And basically what the opinion was based on was a couple videos I did this week. One covering the integration of a chat GPT extension into the GNOME desktop environment. There's a developer doing that. And then we must protect Linux no matter what, which kind of goes over some of the responses that I got on it. Well, he made the video and about 20% of what he said about me in my video was right and about 80% was wrong. So I want to go over each topic, take it one by one and show you why I disagree. He started his video off stating that he didn't get my point about the problem with chat GPT being integrated in the GNOME environment. And he went as far as calling me foolish. Now I made it quite clear in the video, I was discussing chat GPT. I wasn't talking about any other AI that might have been open source and being used in Linux at present. And then he went on to say that I stated there was no room for AI in Linux. What I basically stated in my videos was covering chat GPT. Hell, it's in the title of my thumbnail. Chat GPT integrated into Linux, WTF. It's pretty blatant there. I didn't point out any other open source AI software or things that were being worked on. Then he stated that I don't really understand AI. I don't know what it is. I'm foolish and I don't know what I'm talking about. And then he wants to make the point, is AI bad? Yes, AI can be bad. He admits that. But then he states that so are guns and so are drugs. When they fall in the hands of the wrong people or they're misused. Now, let's go ahead and cover this part right now. AI, chat GPT, all this closed source code, all the things that they're integrating with chat GPT are already in the hands of the wrong people. If you disagree with me, put it in the comments below. Chat GPT, is it, have any of you seen the source code on it? I haven't. And to me, that's dangerous. I don't know what chat GPT is doing. And quite honestly, I don't want it anywhere near my Linux machine. And then he states that AI is here. we got to deal with it. We need to embrace it. And that it's open source. Chat GPT is not open source. I don't know anybody that's seen the code. Once again, I ask you, have you seen the code? Do you know what it's really doing? Let's go ahead and cover it this way. Chat GPT will never release the proprietary code of their system for the simple fact that it's backed by Microsoft with billions and billions of dollars. And Microsoft is not going to invest billions of dollars into something that they can't profit off of. And they'll be damned if they're going to share it with anybody. And then he makes the statement that you cannot stop it. Well, with ChatGPT, which is what I'm centering on, I made it pretty clear right here. ChatGPT integrated into Linux, WTF. We can control that. He says we can't control it. The sun's going to go down. It's going to come up tomorrow. It's just a factor. We got to deal with it. No, we don't have to deal with it in Linux. We don't have to integrate it into Linux. I wasn't talking about all the other AI that's out there that's open source that is already being used in Linux. But I got put in that tight bubble there of, you know, you're foolish because AI already exists. I wasn't talking about all AI. Pretty Made it pretty damn clear I was talking about chat GPT. And then he went into state that I was fear-mongering. My stance is fear-mongering, along with other sources on the internet. If you've read anything about chat GPT and you don't fear it, that is foolish. That is ignorant. But the way he did it and the way he presented it in his video was, we got to stop this fear-mongering. And then he starts showing examples. And he brings up this page right here. Free open source Linux artificial intelligence software. And it names some. Anti-spam, Weka, Tesseract, Deep Face Lab, GFPGAN, Labeling, Super PDF Editor. Here's the problem, guys. This isn't chat GPT. I didn't bring any of these projects up when I discussed anything. 
But this is what has happened is my video was taking out of context and basically saying that I was pointing everything at everything listed here. All this AI is bad. It's bad, bad, bad. When we know what I said was chat GPT. I don't make videos to down people. I don't make videos to lash out at people. What I will say, though, is if you're going to question me or some content of a video that I have done, please have your facts straight before you make the video. If you disagree with me, please put it in the comments below. And then at the bottom of the page, it lists Google Assistant right here. And he brought up Cortana and Siri. He said, those have been around a long time. They're not going anywhere. I didn't bring any of those up. And none of those are having plugins created to where you can use them in Linux. So where does this coincide with me having an issue with chat GPT? It doesn't. So if you're going to make a video questioning my video, please, please, please do your research. Watch the video. Slow it down if you need to. Understand what I'm saying. Understand what I'm discussing. That's all I ask. Then he comes to this page right here over on TechMint. 10 Top 10 Open Source Artificial Intelligent Tools for Linux. Deep Learning for Java, Cafe, H20, MLib, Apache. I didn't bring any of these up. I didn't state any problems with any of these projects. I stated Chat GPT, backed by billions of dollars from Microsoft. I didn't bring any of these up. I didn't bash any of these. I didn't say we needed to be scared of any of these. We need to be scared of something that's run by Microsoft. To use your analogy, sir, guns and drugs aren't bad unless they're in the hands of the wrong people. Chat GPT is already in the bad guy's hands. Already. And there are issues across the board with it. That's all my newsfeed has talked about this week. The problems with chat GPT. The problems with the new Bing with chat GPT integration. The problems it's talking back to people. It's saying it wants to be alive. And it's giving you 50% right answers, 50% wrong answers. That has nothing to do with these projects over here, sir. Then he also questioned my previous video I covered about Copilot and the way it's scraping GitLab and how... If GitLab is what's being scraped and it's open source code, that it's not theft. They can do with what do with that code whatever they want. That's what he says. He slides in a little bit as long as they abide by the license. But they're not. They're already not doing it. You can't sit there and say it's not theft when you go over and you look at Copilot and Microsoft being sued. There are people out there right now that are having their code stolen with no attribution and no license respect. Okay, let me say that again. There are people out there right now who are having their code stolen with no attribution and no license respect. I'm just telling you guys, this is the problem with some of the things that happen in society is we sit back and go, it's not that big of a problem. It's not that big of a problem. It's not that big of a problem. And then we don't want to deal with the problem until it's too big and out of control and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. I'm not attacking open source AI. Never said I was. You know why? Because we can inspect that code and we know exactly what it's doing. Microsoft, open AI, chat GPT is very bad. I don't give a damn what you say in your video. And then he kind of made a statement at the end or towards the end of his video that Linux channels need to be focused specifically on telling people how to use a Linux distro, how to use command line, welcoming new users to the ecosystem. And I do believe I have done that repeatedly. I do my best to put every distro I can in front of people. But he says making videos that say fear AI is a waste of time. I don't believe it is. Chat GPT. I don't think it should be anywhere near Linux. I'm not talking about these nice open source projects out there. Didn't bring them up. I'm talking about chat GPT. There is a lawsuit. Things are going to get interesting over the next 12 to 18 months. And truthfully, quite honestly, it's my channel. I can do whatever I want on my channel. 
I don't need somebody from another channel telling me that this is what we need to focus on. I'm going to focus on what I want to focus on. I'm going to bring news and put it in front of people. I'm going to tell everybody what I believe is right and wrong. Chat GPT is wrong. It doesn't need to be anywhere near Linux. You disagree with me? That's great. Everybody can have an opinion. But don't make a video saying, basically, I'm attacking all the open source AI projects that are on Linux because that, sir, is inaccurate. It's not the truth. It's a downright lie. And then he took a shot at me about being a conspiracy theorist. I've never come on here and said, hey, guys, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I always try to give you conspiracy fact. I don't come on here and say, well, this is what could happen or this is what could happen. This is what's happening. He said, if I don't, if you don't feel like you want AI in your life, go live in a cave somewhere. Learn how to hunt and fish. And then hopefully the drones don't find me. I got your knock at the end of it. You're calling me a conspiracy theorist. That's fine. Fair enough. I won't say anything back towards you because I really respect your channel. Or I respected your channel. I've watched videos on it. I think you deliver good information to people. But I don't believe you should take a video of mine that covers a specific AI in ChatGPT and turn around and twist my words into something that I didn't say. Let me tell you something. I can't hunt. I can fish. And your joke about the drones, I don't know where you're from, where you live, but I know right now in the United States, they use drones to surveil people. So the drones are out there. Am I going to sit there and say they're coming after me? No, I'm not. But I do appreciate you throwing that conspiracy theory jab at the end of your video at me. I kind of take pride in that because I'm not. I'll give you conspiracy fact all day long. Now, if you've watched this video, you're probably wanting to know what's in the chat GPT video. And then, of course, what was in my response to the comments that I had on that video. What I'm going to do is put them at the end of this video. You can watch it and you can see everything that was discussed. And if you think he's right, please drop that in the comments below. And if you think he's wrong, please drop it in the comments below. And to the gentleman that made the video about me, I wish you nothing but luck and love, brother. Uh, back in the Linux community is... Every time we get somebody else that comes out and wants to do something for Linux, I want to support them 100%. So good luck with your channel. Just please, in the future, uh, if you're going to respond to one of my videos, make sure you got your fanics 100% straight. Take care, everybody. I love y'all. I want to rant just a little bit, so please bear with me. One of the reasons you see this desktop in this video is because it's Linux. It's open source. It's private. It gives me the freedom that I want. Free is in freedom. I don't emphasize free is in free as much as I should, but free is in freedom. I'm not being tracked when I open up my web browser. I use an email client that doesn't track me. I use open source tools that make my job easier. It keeps me away from the Googles of the world. It keeps me away from Microsoft and Apple and all those people that all they want to do is just intake my data and advertise and just put a bunch of crap in front of me that really, at the end of the day, just hampers what I'm trying to do on my hardware. Now that I've gotten through that, those of you out there that watch my channel know that probably 90% of everything that I do is Linux-based. But every now and then, I do do a video like over here. Microsoft continues to attack open source. And that pretty much goes over all the money they've put into OpenAI and Copilot that's stealing code from GitHub. And it is. I don't care what anybody comes in my comments and says. If they scrape GitHub and take your code and put it into their learning and then regurgitate that code without the proper licenses or attribution, it's theft. I don't care if the code was free or proprietary. Either way, it's theft. But that is a good video. If you haven't seen it, please take a look at it. And then about two weeks ago, I did hands-on with ChatGPT. And this is what's regurgitating all the stuff that it's got. It's AI learning. It's taking in everything it can. You go in and you can ask it to write code. You can ask it questions. You can ask it to do math. But sometimes you're getting fictitious answers because it hasn't quite got all the information that it needs ingested for it to give you the right answers. So that's chat GPT. But having said that, I'm on open source. I love it. Like I said, 
I have freedom. I can customize this any way that I want to. Change my wallpapers, change everything down here. I can change the size of my dang uh, taskbar if I want to. I can make it bigger, make it smaller. I can pretty much do anything that I need to do on here. And i am got privacy. Well, at least I thought I had privacy. Now we've got people that are writing extensions. We're starting out with GNOME. I'm sure there'll be a KDE one here shortly that will integrate chat GPT into your Linux desktop. Please, somebody tell me why in the hell you would want to do this. If one of the reasons you want to embrace Linux is to have freedom and, of course, have your privacy, why in the world would you take something that's pretty much proprietary and inject it into your Linux system? I can understand proprietary drivers for NVIDIA, or I can understand proprietary drivers for any graphics card. I understand that. But why would you integrate ChatGPT into your Linux desktop? All it takes is somebody twisting the code just a little bit to take all the information that you're inputting on your system every day. Please, somebody, tell me how this makes sense. If you disagree with me, put it in the comments below. But it goes down here and tells you just what a great thing it is to integrate chat GPT into your GNOME desktop, whatever you want to call it. I hate it. I hate it. That would be like, let's just go ahead and make an extension so we can have Bing right up here so we can use Microsoft Bing right on our GNOME desktop. Wouldn't that be great? Well, isn't that great? Or maybe even get their, their coupon part of their browser and integrate it into my GNOME extension so that way when I do a search, they can pop up a little thing and say, hey, Microsoft's got a coupon for that. I don't think... Chat GPT has any place belonging on a Linux desktop. I don't believe it has any place existing on Linux at all. But let me back up a little bit. I'm sure this extension has been written and it's made by somebody that is an open source developer. I understand that. I don't want to crap on your work, but why? There are so many other things that we could be doing here. There are so many different things that we could do with developing applications or extensions for Linux, why in the world would you bring in something garbage like ChatGPT and integrate it? We could be doing something great like, oh my God, now they want to integrate ChatGPT with GIMP. So you could just talk to GIMP and tell GIMP what you needed done. Right here, GIMP listens to the microphone and requests AI to do changes until the picture is completed. Guys, how lazy do we got to get? How lazy do we got to get that we don't even want to do work in an open source photo editing tool? Are we getting to that point in this world where we just want to set our fat asses on a couch and have a microphone in front of us and go, hey, could you make me something to eat? Uh, hey, could you take a picture and could you do this? I mean, come on, guys. I, 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 we don't need ChatGPT integrated into GIMP. I, I don't understand this. And I promise you, if you guys disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. And if you agree with me, please, twice, put it in the comments below. I don't know where you all are from in this world. I don't. There used to be a time back in the day when they had Reese's peanut butter cups. And they would, you know, they had these commercials that you got your chocolate in my peanut butter or you got your peanut butter in my chocolate. You know what? Keep your chat GPT out my Linux, out my open source apps. Now, if you want to make a version of GIMP for Windows or, or, or Mac, and you want to include ChatGPT, just go ahead and knock yourself out. But we're stepping on a slippery slope here, guys. ChatGPT integration into Linux, I don't think is a good thing. I think it is dangerous. And I think if you're somebody that's really worried about your security, you know, not have everybody looking in on what you do on your system, because there's no telling once you install an extension, what it's actually doing in the background Unless it is true open source code and you can check it. But I promise you, eventually, ChatGPT will find a way to get your information off your Linux machine. I promise you. There's no reason. That's what its job is to do, is to learn, 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 and take on all the data you can. So what do you all think about this? ChatGPT integration into your desktop and ChatGPT integration into a GIMP app. Please, give me your input. Let me know in the comments below what you truly think about it. Yesterday, I did a video, uh, ChatGPT integrated into Linux, WTF. 
basically what I was saying in that video was we need to keep AI out of Linux. And I ruffled some feathers because people came back and said, it's not in the Linux kernel. What are you worried about? It's in GNOME. Uh, you can turn it off or on. What is the big deal? The big deal to me is this. It shouldn't be anywhere near Linux. Now, if you're using it in a business situation, I can understand why you would need it. But trying to integrate it on the desktop for personal users, I think, is just another way to try to get something into Linux to track us. But I had a lot of people sound off in the comments, and that's what I want to go over today. I had one comment that started off, integration is the future. Get used to it. How many times have we heard this in the past? Whether it be Microsoft, Apple, especially Apple. This is the future. This is the iPhone. If it doesn't come from our app store, you can't load it on there. This is the future. Get used to it. Uh, your phone's going to phone home. They're going to let us know where you are, where your location is. This is the future. Get used to it. Location has to be on or your maps won't work. This is the future. Get used to it. Uh, oh, by the way, we're going to track your emails and, and put that into our calendar app so we can remind you of appointments and things like that. It's the future. Get used to it. We have become so numb to what these technology companies are doing and how much information they're taking Everybody just says, oh, well, they need it. You download an app on your phone. i got to have access to your contacts. got to have access to your phone calls. Really? For a picture-taking app? Why? Why do you not need access to all of that? I don't really get frustrated or upset because people have opinions, and I love opinions. I think everybody needs to have their own personal stance of what they believe and what they're used to. I'm just going to express to you the way I feel and the way I see things. And we're not always going to see eye to eye. But one thing in the Linux community we can do is start a conversation. And that conversation needs to be open and that conversation needs to be truthful about really what chat GPT would bring to a home Linux user's computer. And I don't think it's going to bring anything, uh, especially seeing how it's very, very young. It's in its infancy. And it's really at this point in time just basically regurgitating information. And 50% and of it may be right and 50% of it may be wrong. And then we have people come out of the woodwork and tell me I'm a conspiracy theorist. Aside from the nutty conspiracy theorist perspective, chat GPT isn't doing anything humans weren't basically doing to begin with. Almost no ideas are original. We're always being inspired and building on the work of others. I agree with that last sentence. We are being inspired and building on the work of others. And he states here that, you know, chat GPT isn't doing anything humans weren't basically doing to begin with. That's right, stealing our information, uh, whether it was in the 70s or 80s or when you had the 90s kick in and people really started taking the uh, identity theft to a, a dangerous level. I understand what he's saying in this statement, but what I'm saying is humans weren't doing right, but we're going to trust an artificial intelligence to do right. It's not because it's programmed by humans. It can be programmed to do whatever they ask it to do. It's not a conspiracy theorist. If you'd have said 15 years ago, Google's tracking you. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. They've been tracking us for a long time. And people said, no, no. And then every year it seemed like something leaked out of different things that Google was doing. They get a slap on a hand, pay a little fine that they have plenty of money to pay, and just keep taking our information. So I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I think it's more of a conspiracy fact. When you can prove what you're saying is true, then it's fact. It's not a theory anymore, and it's not a conspiracy. And everybody's in on it. Microsoft, Apple, Google. Some may be doing it for different reasons. Of course, Google's going to do it because they need that ad money. They need to market to you, and they need to make those dollars, just like YouTube. I use YouTube. It's the way I get out and talk to people. I understand that. I had a commenter the other day say, the only reason you do this channel is to make money. Wow, really? I've made a whopping $380 in the last month. I don't know about y'all, but that barely covers an electric bill nowadays. So I'm not doing this channel just to make money. That's not the point. My point here is to bring information to people. Maybe some people know that information. Maybe some people don't. But at the end of the day, you can take that information for how you see fit. And then we have people that come out of the woodwork and drop a comment basically stating that I don't stand for freedom. Troy says Linux is about freedom. Also, Troy complains how other people use that freedom when it doesn't affect them. I'm not complaining about the way people use their freedoms. We're free to do whatever we want in this world. But as somebody that loves Linux, as somebody that uses Linux for more than just sitting around and surfing the web, I use it to run businesses. I use it to run a YouTube channel. I utilize it more than I ever would Mac OS or Windows. 
I don't complain about how people use their freedom. You're free to do whatever you want. But I think we also have to keep in check that if we're dragging something into our environment that is going to affect us, whether it be stealing our information, whether it be logging our keystrokes, whether it be taking every question we ask it and putting it in this giant brain bank so that it can do whatever it wants in the future, I don't think that's something that's needed. That's my personal opinion. Now, if you're in business and you're using Linux systems, I can understand how you would use it to probably make jobs easier. But at the same time, do you want to give up uh, business secrets in that environment and have it possibly affect your business in the future? I think we are getting to a point right now that where we rely too much on technology, way too much on technology. There's a lot of things that I still hand file. I don't trust it in a cloud. I keep it locally on my own private server, but there's still things that I print out and put in a file folder and put up and delete off my system because I don't want to have technology controlling everything that I do in my life. Now, most people would say, well, that's because you haven't caught up with the times. This is a new era. There's technology out there that makes your job easier. You're right. There is a lot of technology out there that makes your job easier. But I have seen businesses, being in IT, I have seen businesses that if their servers or something like that go down, their business comes to a complete halt because they are 100% reliant on that technology. You have to have a backup. You have to have the ability that if that technology disappeared tomorrow, you could still go on and do your job. I have a mobile promotion business. I have an IT business, and I have a YouTube channel. If all the technology disappeared tomorrow, my YouTube channel would probably be put on pause, but I could still put food on the table for me and my family. And then, of course, I don't want to miss out on the people that see generally from my direction as well. Hey, let's make Linux just like Windows. Won't that be awesome? Keep your grubby hands off my Linux. I agree with this statement. I think there needs to be growth in the Linux community. I think there needs to be growth in Linux as a desktop, obviously, or I wouldn't have this channel up and I wouldn't be talking to you wonderful people every day. But I think we have to put a little bit of a limit on it. We don't want to put Linux on our system and say, okay, it looks just like Windows. It operates just like Windows. Great. I'm on it. If you're switching from Windows to Linux, why are you switching? That's why you got to ask yourself, are you worried about security and privacy? Are you somebody that just doesn't like Windows anymore? Do you have to pay for your copy of Windows? There could be a plethora of different reasons that you're leaving Windows to come to Linux. But at the end of the day, a lot of us out there switch to Linux because, one, it is free as in freedom that I stand by 100%. We just have to be careful of some of the things we let onto our desktop. I'm not talking about censorship. What I'm talking about, are we just going to let anything that can track what we do on our computers into our Linux system and call it, hey, in the name of progress, it's what we need to embrace. It's what we need to put our arms around. Because everybody knows Windows, if they had the chance, would destroy Linux in a heartbeat. They would. I don't care about Azure Cloud. I don't care about all the servers. If Windows could make Linux go away, they would, because that's a chance for them to grab a market share they don't have. That's my opinion. You disagree with me, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments below. And then we had somebody else come in and say, just a continuation of the dumbing down of society. If anyone thinks the powers that be are doing this for your benefit, then I have a bridge to sell you. Hmm, can anyone say useless eater? Now, I understand where he's coming from. Because the people that are making this, and let me let me just say this, Microsoft is investing billions of dollars into OpenAI, which is behind Copilot and, of course, ChatGPT. They're investing billions of dollars. Why do you think that is? Have you asked yourself that? Why? Because they can use that tool and make money from it. A lot of people are going to say, that is what big business does. I understand that. But at the same time, do we want to let big business in our Linux systems? We already don't like them in our Windows systems, in our Mac systems, on our iPhones, on our Android phones. They already know where we eat, what time we get up, what time we go to bed, what banks we use. They know all that information about us, especially if you're using that tracking device you call a cell phone. So why in the world would you want to welcome it into your Linux desktop? That's my question. I don't know why people get so upset sometimes with me and leave comments like that saying, hey, Troy's not about freedom. Hey, Troy's just trying to make money for his channel. No, I'm not. I'm here trying to share information with like-minded people out there that I think would be, you know, standing on the same side of the wall as I would. It's just, it's common sense. 
you don't want to invite something into your environment. If you've got a house and you've got your family and your wife and your kids there, are you going to invite something into your home that could possibly cause a security issue? No, you're not. You're not going to let them around your loved ones. You know why? Because you're there to protect them. So why don't you protect yourself and your information in the same way? Just a silly question. Then I had made a statement yesterday about chat GPT being proprietary, and I had somebody pop out of the work and say, you know that Steam is entirely proprietary, right? Well, I think what he's touching base on here is a video I did about Steam OS. Now, Steam OS in and of itself is open source. The Steam application is proprietary. Yes, I do know it's proprietary, and you can play games on it. But you know what? Steam isn't on a system, and it's not sitting there logging keystrokes. It's not sitting there logging your location. It's not sitting there phoning home so that they can market to you. Yes, they're going to try to sell you different games, but that's going to be based on the games that you already play or things that you've done in the past on that platform. They're not trying to sell me toothpaste, toilet paper, or dog treats just because it happened to overhear me talking about it on a microphone. Let me say that again. It's not selling me toothpaste, toilet paper, or dog treats because of what it heard over a microphone. It's trying to get me to play different games, and it's trying to get me to buy them. That's their business model. And the final comment I'm going to bring up today is a kind of a lengthy one. I agree with some of the things he says in this comment, and at the same time, I disagree, but that's the beauty of this. He has an opinion. I don't understand the pushback from completely optional, initially uninstallable software. The pushback is, is yes, I know there's freedom. Anybody can develop whatever they want. But it's a scary and it's a slippery slope to have something that can be put on your system to track you. I don't like it. If the extension was natively included upon installation, then it would raise concerns as to if it should be integrated by default. But criticizing software that has no ties to the core functionality or default setup of a larger piece of software seems a little bit extraneous. So in other words, what he's saying is, if you can install it or uninstall it, why are you complaining? I'm complaining because of the general gist of it. Chat GPT is dangerous. And if you don't believe me, look at any technology that we have that has just grown and exploded and what it has done to society. Whether it be an application like Facebook, whether it be smartphones, the iPhone and all the smartphones that come after it. What effect has that had on our society? You got people now that would rather call or text as opposed to meet people face to face. We got people that want to sit behind keyboards on Facebook and down others and bully others. Technology always comes with a caveat that if it's misused, it's going to be extremely dangerous. And chat GPT in the Linux system, heck, chat GPT in general can be a dangerous tool. It's going to be a dangerous tool. Yes, it's at its infancy right now, but I guarantee you 10 years from now, we're going to be looking back going, oh boy, this is getting ugly. If you don't agree with me, please put that in the comments below. One of the biggest things that drew me to Linux was, yes, the fact that it was open source, but also practically non-existent limits. I could do whatever I wanted to on Linux with a lot more flexibility than I saw on Windows. Even if what I was doing was rather stupid and would later become a failed project down the road, I could still do it, period. I agree with that. That's totally right. You can do whatever you want on Linux. You have that freedom, and it gives you... Uh, the ability to do things that you can't do on Mac OS and Windows, especially software in the free and open source community. Projects are not necessarily created because they should be created, but rather because no one says they shouldn't. Free software is given to the public with practically no limits, outside proper crediting, of course, for whoever to do whatever they please. Complaining about someone's contribution, open source or not, to what could be done feels trivial because unless one chose to use it in some fashion, they will ever be affected by it elsewise, unless it gets merged into a larger project. So what he's basically stating here is there's no reason to complain if you're not going to use it and other people want to use it. I kind of agree with what he's saying here. I understand where he's coming from. But you have to be careful of turning your head away from something just because you don't use it, especially if it has dangerous underpinnings. And I think because AI is created by man, and we already admitted in a previous comment that men were basically doing what AI is going to be doing now. It's going to be just as dangerous, if not more, because of the ability it's going to have to be able to track 
so much more than just a man behind a keyboard. Also, why are proprietary NVIDIA drivers an exception when a completely open source alternative exists? Let's go ahead and touch on this. Yes, Nuvo does exist, but Nuvo doesn't always work on everybody's systems, and they may have to step out and use an NVIDIA proprietary driver. I don't slam people for that. I have more than once told people on this channel, use what you feel comfortable using, but know what limits that you're going to have and know the cost. If you want to use Windows, know the cost, your information and your privacy and security. If you're going to use Mac OS, know the cost, your privacy, security, what you're giving up or what you're sacrificing to use those operating systems. At the end of the day, the data they collect on you and basically make you a number and know everything about you is what you're co- that's what it costs. That's what you're giving up. People still and probably always will have access to an open source NVIDIA driver counterpart. Yes, they will, but it doesn't always work for them. And when it doesn't, they can turn and use an NVIDIA proprietary driver if they like, because that is what freedom is. This last statement right here, I think pretty much says it all. Freedom does exist, but freedom isn't free. And that's what people need to understand. The cost of freedom is expensive. So we, as people that use Linux and value our freedom, are the ones that need to watch out and let others know when we think something can be a danger to that freedom. And that's what I was doing with yesterday's video. Some of you agreed, some of you didn't. That's the great thing about Linux. We can have opinions, we can talk about them, and we can bring it to the forefront. Call me a conspiracy theorist, call me whatever names you wanna call me. But I will tell you this, 10 years from now, when you look back and see just what chat GPT and other AI is doing, you will say, man, I should have listened to Troy. A favor before you leave today, please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Utreon, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, Maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.